Hello, hi. Surgical portfolio. What it is, why is it used, whether you need it or not, in this video, I'll try to describe and explain about it. So, the widely used uh, portfolio for all the UK trainees and um, some of the other countries as well is ISCP portfolio. So, what it is, it is a uh, portfolio on which you maintain your uh, the work-based assessments, which are the basic clinical experience and you are signed off by a competent person who is senior than you it can be a registrar or a consultant. Uh, it is required uh, by all the surgical trainees as well as some non-trainee uh, trainees who are intended towards surgery also use it. In this video, I will try to explain the importance of it, the use of it, and how to fill in the different work-based assessment, what is the cost of it, whether you are a trainee or a non-trainee, whether you need it or not. So starting off uh, with, the, with the link, which is iscp.ac.uk, first of all, you need to make an account by clicking on the register here. Then it will basically ask you some of the uh, simple questions like your name, email, your contact number, your country registration number, which can be GMC, BMDC or uh, different in terms where your country you belong. That account will be set up and then you are able to use it. I will just log into my account. So by logging into it, while it is logging in, we can discuss about the cost. It costs around uh, uh, 260 pounds um, each year for the maintenance cost. It is paid by yourself, um, whether it be UK or internationally. Uh, it is a lot of cost, so you need to make sure whether you need it or not because subscribing it and just not using it is not worthwhile spending hard on money of £260. It is uh, required and compulsory by all the surgical trainees to do their work based assessment on this one, how to use it. As you can see, there are uh, five uh, dashboard menu, dashboard learning and portfolio. So if you are, have not used it before, then uh, what you need to do is um, go to learning and also have a discussion with your clinical or education supervisor. You will need uh, one education supervisor and one at least one clinical supervisor. And then if you are a trainee, then you will need a, a trainee um, head of uh, TP, which is called TPD, which is Trainee Development Officer, who is the head of all the trainees and you need to register under the name. The how to set it up, you go to learning. The how to use it, basically there are five, da five uh, links here, menu, dashboard, learning, add and portfolio. So menu will tell you about different options, about uh, your portfolio, your curriculum and uh, all this information. Your dashboard is the link where you can work your, uh, all the work in progress shows, all the submitted uh, WBAs which need to be signed off, some messages here and a CV, you need to submit the annual CV for your ERCP as well for your fee, subscription here you can see a GCST fee here option as well, here you can uh, uh, see your training history, account details and all the information. Um, so here is add option if you want to add a new placement or anything uh, on this uh, a link here you can add anything from on this one i will tell, explain it shortly so when you add a placement first of all you need to put a placement here when you click on here then you will be shown an option to add new placement which is basically uh, your training placement it can be a department like for say uh, it's a upper gi department you need to go there and make a placement about it select your education supervisor your clinical supervisor your time duration as well um, um, so in this way you need to set it up after setting it up you that a new link will open which will show under learning okay here you need to uh, make objective meeting with your supervisor and then you to have midpoint meeting and final meeting here all these can be clicked here and checked upon here as you can see my all the midpoint final meetings are done till 4th of February currently I'm in this um, rotation February to August working in Queen Elizabeth here it will show that you know, my midpoint meeting is pending which I will do later on and in this way these are other requirements for my ARCP. Next thing is uh, for all the people who are using using it. Here you can e-logbook is basically a surgical logbook 
uh, which is free to use anyone can use it i will definitely tell people to use it because it is in a digital format and uh, whenever someone asks how many operating has you done then you can show them and it will be a record of your uh, uh, of your surgical procedure and surgical skills here is general entry uh, is pdp is basically a development plan here's the road you can upload your rotas many people do uh, some people do it uh, some don't next is the evidence if you we go here then it will uh, it will show a um, couple of options like assessment of audit cbd clinical evaluation exercises basically your clinical skills like doing examination on a patient doing abdominal examination um a shoulder examination or any other examination which we are doing and the next option is clinical evaluation exercise or consent so consent is basically asking your permission from someone to do a procedure and uh, tell them about the hazards benefits and the results of the operation in order to do any procedure it is a requirement and the law by a, to do a consent from a patient if we are doing a consenting about uh, basically if we say appendectomy and it discuss about these details and if you have done it in front of your trainer which may be consultant or uh, a senior registrar then you can fill it up fill it up is all is only the basic information which it asked you filling in the form next is dops is basically a uh, direct observation of procedure skills procedure skills what it includes like scrubbing washing up closing abdomen opening abdomen and uh, color other uh, couple of things i will just shortly open it and explain what are the requirements and how to you fill it up what is multiple source feedback is it is basically done at least once a year it is a feedback from the other people your colleagues it can include it can include nurses ward clerks your consultant your supervisor your colleagues registrars anyone who is working has worked with you but i will definitely uh, say that you discuss it with your colleagues before sending a request form because if there is a problem it is on your portfolio then it will be difficult to remove it and justify it have a discussion with your colleagues before and and see if there is any uh, differences of opinion discuss with them try to solve it next is basically your training feedback of your teaching which you do regularly next is procedure based assessment as a course surgical training um, you are expected to do on season and drainage appendectomy hernias um uh, management of hemorrhoids and some other uh, procedures you can fill it up and basically this is a detailed discussion of or detailed uh, procedure assessment of a procedure surgical procedure so i will discuss uh, about the dops if you go click here on the dops what you can do here you can see is the procedure for example uh, uh, i will write as code because these are all the mandatory uh, requirements for post surgical training if you are a post surgical training you basically need to fill in these core ones first and then you can uh, gradually grow up on these for example if we select cloyer here is the assessment date for example it's 3rd 4th 6th of may you can fill it in then is the rater is basically your uh, supervisor or anyone who is supervising you here is the hospital general information discussion about what is good but they have found good in you anything which need development and the actions here the training comments here the reflections how do you feel about it next next is simple basically uh, you discuss about indications anatomy procedure and uh, it is self explanatory what these options are these are four so one is if they haven't observed you during this stage of uh, at this they can see as see as not observed development required if you need improvement uh it is satisfactory or it is outstanding so these are the basically 6 to 7 points you need to fill in and click and depending upon um uh, what is the requirement uh what you have done are they satisfied with it or not here the number of ambulance elective procedure and number of procedures done next is global summary so it was very confusing for me as well as explanatory because you know uh, here it says uh, level 4 he is basically anticipate and deal with common problems of complication so above level 3 
or I would say level four is the one uh, which you have achieved when you are a consultant or basically you don't need any support me. That is the highest level of DOPS. Um, for simple procedure which are core you can fill it in but do discuss with your supervisor before filling it in because it's a very key importance. Then you click here and submit to your supervisor and you have submitted it. And in the same way, there are a couple of others like input in your audits, courses, super examination, portfolio publications and all that. Here, if you click on the portfolio, you can see I filled in these assessments and all the observations and all my portfolios here. So this was a short brief overview how to use it. Generally, all these assessments are called WBAs in general. If someone asks you, have you filled in the WBA, this is the one they are talking about. And in which they have different terms, I have different way of filling it in. Cost is £260 per year, which you have to pay from your own pocket. But the good thing, the people who are working in UK and the uh, tax here, this is a tax, tax deductible expense. So for example, if you hire taxpayer pay 40% tax, then you can claim back 40% of the money from 260 pounds you have paid. So that's a good thing that you can claim it, but um, you have to pay for their, this portfolio, which is added burden on the financial expense to be a surgical trainee. Secondly, whether you should use it for trainees, it's compulsory whether you are a co-trainee or you are a registrar, it's compulsory to use it. If you are a non-trainee, sometimes it is not worth paying this much of money because there are some offline portfolios which are and for provided from the trust. Do check it from your trust that if they have a portfolio, you can fill all this information over there. If you want to use it, it's up to you because the uh, reason I'm saying is that because you would not have any TPD on your area, so your uh, placement will not be accredited. If you're a trainee, that's compulsory. If you're non trainee, it's your choice if you want to use it. Um, use it. If not, then um, you can have the other portfolios which are provided by the trust free of cost. But the people who are uh, registrars, sometimes it is uh, beneficial for them because uh, some of them are going for a scissor route, which is, which is basically a non-conventional pathway of be, being a consultant in UK with the competencies and all the information available uh, on your portfolio. For that, it can be very beneficial because uh, this is all the trainees, consultants or trainees are accustomed to this portfolio. So if they are using it uh, and then they have filled it in, you send them the ticket basically, send them the assessment, they sign it off. It is on your portfolio that you have done this and you are uh, basically eligible or uh, competent to do that for Fajr. With some of the other portfolios uh, not offer that. For that reason, it can be beneficial. But if you're a core trainee or you're working as only a locum doctor, locum registrar, then it can it's not worth paying for it because you will not be logging much cases in it and it will be not useful so it is based on your personal circumstances whether it can be useful for you or not so here was a small uh, introduction how to use it when i started using i didn't know how to use it so i uh, thought of making a video about it i hope it will be very useful for you do comments and as well as tell me if you like it or not, whether you have any questions, uh, you can email me, you can message me on my social media accounts. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll see you in the next video with another topic. Bye.